Hello everyone. This network update is concerning one of our core theologies, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and specifically the initial physical evidence of speaking in tongues. Because of the important nature of this topic, this video will be about twice as long, so thanks for your patience. Recently, we've seen a slew of different ministers and churches that are changing their view on the initial physical evidence, and uh, it's creating some tension. And so at times like this, I think we need to look back to the history of why we believe what we do. When we were first began over 100 years ago with the Azusa Street outpouring in California, speaking in tongues was relatively unknown across the church world. So when God poured out his spirit there, like he did very similar in Acts 2, uh, we felt the need to validate that experience for other believers. And so as we dove into the scriptures, we developed that statement of fundamental truth. And much of the wording is still very similar to that time as it is today. And so uh, that was a rallying point for us. It made us stronger and really uh, kick-started the great assemblies of God fellowship we have today. Unfortunately, now as we discuss it, it's beginning to divide us. I've seen people leaving churches, uh, leaving networks, and even leaving relationships because they can't get along and they argue about this. Whenever I see that, I think it's signs of the enemy working his way in to cause division and to lessen our impact in this world. He wants to take a great gift from Jesus and twist it so that it doesn't have its full impact and hurt his plans. So let, let's not let that happen. I encourage you, if you're wrestling with this, that's okay. You can certainly pull coals in this, you can challenge it. Uh, I want you to bring this up in our network because any one of our theologies is strong enough to stand up to any discussion. So let's discuss it thoroughly. Talk about it with your network group and their leader. Talk about it with your presbyter. Bring it up with your lead pastor of your local ministry. Uh, discuss it with our executives, with me, uh, because uh, I wanna be stronger working on this together. Now, I wanna be clear about my own personal view on this as your superintendent, but also as a peer in our network. I do believe in this theology. And the reason why is those three words that describe it, the initial physical evidence. First initial. I believe that it is the first sign that somebody is baptized in the Holy Spirit when they speak in tongues. And that's because of the three documented examples in Acts. Acts 2 in the upper room, Acts 10 with the household of Cornelius, and Acts 19 with the believers in Ephesus. In all those cases, it was prominently mentioned that we knew they were baptized because they spoke in tongues. Now, there's almost no other documented cases of baptisms of the Holy Spirit in the Bible. And even in those few instances where we infer that is happening, there's, again, really no mention of any other sign of evidence that that was happening. And so we have a very strong scriptural position for that belief. Those who choose to disagree with the initial physical evidence or think there's another sign or no sign needed are moving from what I believe is a strong scriptural place to a less strong scriptural view. When it comes to our beliefs in theology, I think we should always move up, not down. Because all theology is based on the biblical account. Our personal experience can impact how we view the Bible, but not change our theology. When we begin to base our theology on our personal experience, that's when we can be in borderline heresy and even false prophecy, which is one of the strong things I'm actually tasked to watch out for as a superintendent in our network. The second thing is the word physical. I believe it's the first physical sign, speaking in tongues. But to be clear, there are other signs, non-physical things like attitudes and our thought life, uh, um, what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us on the inside that nobody else can hear. Um, our prayers are sometimes non-verbal. You know, I've heard the argument that people don't agree that tongues is the initial physical evidence because they see people who are baptized in the Spirit speak in tongues but have very poor fruit of the Spirit displayed in their life. Let's be clear, the fruit of the Spirit mentioned in Galatians by Paul is actually an outcome of the Holy Spirit that's given to every believer through salvation. When we become a Christian, we get an installment of the Spirit that helps us change the way we live to honor God. And that's through the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, and so on. Uh, Peter recognized the fruit of the Spirit with the believers he was working with at Cornelius' household, but he knew they needed more. Uh, Paul recognized the fruit of the Spirit in the Ephesian followers who had been baptized in water, but he recognized they needed more. So the fruit of the Spirit is not a sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but of salvation. And uh, it's important we don't mix up those two. And then the final word is evidence. Why is evidence important? Well, it was important for Peter. Uh, he saw there were strong believers, but he knew they needed more. It was important for Paul. He saw they were strong believers in Ephesus, 
but he knew they needed more. So if it was important for Peter, the founder of the church, <laughs> and important for Paul, the greatest missionary and Bible author the world has ever seen, then it certainly should be urgent for us as well. Many of us have moved away from talking about this theology because it can be divisive and cause people to be frustrated and cause some argument. And even though that has been the case, I think we need to redeem it and we need to continue its urgency because it is important, uh, all the more so in this dark world we live in today, to be empowered by the Spirit to be a witness for God. Now, who's the evidence for? Well, it's for the individual praying and for the person praying with them and leading them. But really, that's it. Nobody else needs to see or hear anything. Well, that's a little different than how we do it today. And most of the opportunities we have to be filled with the Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, are at big camp services or altar calls. And the person praying with you may not even know your name. And it, that's where the human element comes in. I face this when I'm praying with somebody. I want to hear them speak in tongues. And sometimes because I want to feel validated, like I was doing something right, where it validates my belief. And I don't want to have to have the conversation with them afterwards, like don't give up and keep pressing in. And, and so it's more manipulative in that moment. That's not what God ever intended. I think the best case for ministry of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is when it's prioritized in one-on-one -on -one discipleship. That's a, a part of our strategies in our local church that maybe has waned in the recent years, and maybe we should pick that up again because then we could be stronger with this core belief as we move forward. On the term belief, uh, I just want to mention that God gives us the right to choose our beliefs. That's a God-given right to everybody even non-Christians. He doesn't force the issue. So if we can choose what we believe, that means that they are adjustable and that we can change. It's not something we have no control over. We can't say, well, I would love to believe that, but I just can't or I don't. Well, it's not that I can or don't, it's that I, I won't. Now help me with this. As we mature as believers, we surrender everything to God, even our God-given rights, even the right to believe. We tell God, I'll believe what you want me to believe. You know, as believers, there's other things that we believe that are hard to believe from a proof standpoint, but we choose to because we've surrendered everything to God. So I challenge you, if God's called you to be in an Assemblies of God ministry, under an Assemblies of God leader as your authority, if God has called you to be in the Nebraska Ministry Network and to carry an Assemblies of God credential, then choose to believe what the Assemblies of God believes. And then wrestle with it, bring it up, Challenge it, poke holes in it, do everything so that we can be stronger together, but do it from the inside, not from the outside, standing from a different position and trying to prove, some, prove us wrong, if you will. I would have this dream that every person that's a part of our Sermons of God Ministries in the Nebraska Ministry Network would be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the initial physical evidence of speaking in other tongues, empowered to be a witness, so we can make an even greater dent for the kingdom of God in this world. Hey, thanks for listening to the end. Until next time, walk holy, work hard, and worship Him. We'll see you soon. God bless.